Uh, since we didn't see too many hotfixes or anything during the week, we're going to be playing on essentially the same patch as the last two weekends. And you can see one of the teams jokingly has named themselves Battle for RMD. So RMD is going to be a big feature here in Europe once again uh, in the upper bracket. First, we'll be playing Otlov team against Battle for RMD, both new teams. I believe one of them features Ray. He's an old-time competitor. We've seen him throughout the tournament scenes. He's got himself a new squad, which is really awesome. Before we get into that heated series between Zyzon and Enlight elimination series, to start the day, guys, before we head in to our upper bracket series. So let's get it started. Let's get Otlov team versus Battle for RMD in the arena. Negrand is the blind pick. Very curious to see what the two teams will be running. I think Otlov, we've seen them a couple of times running that jungle cleave. We had them last week. RMD, I believe, is the team coming in from Jre. Pretty much the opposite of an RMD player. This guy loves the warrior, always on that warrior, and he is going to be locking in the warrior death knight for this first game. Otlov team substituting in a Discipline Priest last week, making it to the top eight, putting on some good games for us. Let's see how they've improved here for their final cup. I'm looking forward to seeing them competing in the future as a team. I'm hoping they stick together because they certainly do put on a show for us. They're still one of the new teams in the tournament scene. Battle for RMD is a completely new roster as well to the tournament. With Zre as a veteran player on that Warrior, they're going to be running the Restoration Druid Unholy Death Knight Arms Warrior now. This is a very difficult composition as a Discipline Priest to heal through, but one thing that we credited Mercy for last week was his ability to survive, and that is certainly going to be tested against this composition. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. The Jungle Cleave going to be able to play hyper-aggressive early on. Tell Kiz, he's taking quite a bit of damage. Tony Farrell as well. It looks like Otlov team, they're on the back foot. Oh. Right away, Tony Farrell, he's in some trouble. Survival Instinct trades out. He's trying to kite, try to avoid a little bit of damage, but they need crowd control on Rivender. Otherwise, I feel like Battle for RMD, they're going to be able to ride this momentum. I'm wondering if Mercy was anticipating what I thought, that he would be the target. Maybe he built his talents around being the main focus target. But actually, Battle for RMD are going after the Hunter and Feral Druid in a split damage strategy. A huge amount of momentum early on. They already banked a third of the Mercy's mana with that initial exchange. Although Rivendir as well falling behind on mana. Sharp and Blade going to be activated. Zray going into battle stance. Big damage over on to Kelxi. Looking to try and trade out the exhilaration. However, it's healing reduced from Sharpened Blade. Mercy's Penance comes in, but not stabilizing Kelksey just yet. Shadow Mend and Smite likely to be casted here. Mercy going to break out of the stun. Looking like he wants to cross midfield for a Psychic Scream, potentially. Mercy moving over. Dark Archangel activated. The team of Otlov Gaming going to be doing increased damage. Zre recognizing that, retreating back around the corner, but the Gladiator's Maledict absorbing some heals, and he is ultimately forced to trade his most precious defensive cooldown, die by the Sword, although a critical mistake overlapped with the Iron Bark of Rivendir, and now Zray's defense is wide open. Yeah, he's going to be in a little bit of trouble moving forward. Battle for RMD could be on the back foot. Hot Lob team, they've managed to stabilize in the matchup. Good positioning here by Mercy. Should be able to get the heals rolling, but Kelkis, he's in a lot of trouble. Goes in for the trap. He's looking to play aggressive, but this could backfire. Right now, Mercy is having a really difficult time topping him off. Paint suppression is going to fade. Kelkis does finally start getting some heals. The Shadow Man's going to land to stabilize him. Hot live team, still good pressure on Zray. He's in midfield right now, looking to get aggressive and interrupt into a Cyclone on Rivender. Nicely set up there by Tony Farrell, but still, Kelk is he's forced into the aspect of the turtle. Battle for RMD. They've just had pressure from start to finish. This is looking really good. This is a huge amount of pressure for Battle for RMD. I mean, they're completely in the driver's seat. Odlov team are struggling to finally close this game out. If they can secure Freezing Traps, Ray could be in a lot of trouble. They do, but Kelsey's still on the back foot. His Gladiator Safeguard proc absorbing some damage as they try to push Zray over. Zray going to be charging over to Mercy, actually, for a moment, looking for the Intimidating Shout crowd control, looking to finally finish Kelsey here, but the Intimidating Shout is now over. Mercy is freely healing, activating the Dark Archangel. Big push for Otlov. Tony Farrell securing a Skull Bash, putting Rivendir behind. However, activating Iron Park before being interrupted has reduced the damage on Zray significantly. So much so that he is still alive at this point. He may otherwise be dead. Nice read by Rivendir. Mana slightly in favor of the Restoration Druid, but not by much. Yeah, Mercy and Rivendir both struggling in this position. We're only three minutes into the game, and there's not too much left for both teams. Zray could easily fall in just one nice setup. There's a trap. Zray playing defensive. He's in defensive stance. He's trying to get out of line of sight, but Kelkis, he pushes in. What is Ray going to be able to do? Rivender finally connecting the thorns, but does he have the healing? Trixie on onto Kelkis. Mercy grips him away, but he gets gripped back by Rusty. They're trying to take him down. He's caught in a bash. Powered barrier might be enough to keep him alive. Mercy trades out the last little bit of his mana to keep him up. Now Otlov team, they need to play aggressive because they have run out of time. 
All right, let's see if they can close it out. They're still so far behind. If Zray can get in range and land and execute, Kelsey is surely going to go down. War Banner laid down by Zray, trying to predict the trap, but gets killed off. It may not matter. Kelsey is under so much pressure. Zero mana left in the tank for Mercy. Kelsey on the run, just trying to avoid death at this point. Rooting up Rusty into mind control. Kelsey holding on behind the pillar, dropping down a snare trap. But Ultimate isn't going to use it to kite. Instead, disengaging back onto target. They've got 20 seconds to kill Zray. 18 seconds. But their healer's in crowd control first. And Kelsey may just be walking into his demise. Exhilaration available used as soon as possible. Rapture powered shields come in from Mercy, buying as much time as possible. Dark Archangel in what could be the final seconds of the match. Uh, can Kelsey push Zray over with this crowd control? Mercy secures the psychic screen, but Zray's defense is ready and available. And more than enough to continue the push to kill Kelsey. Quite a close game one. Yeah, it was a really good game one, though those of you who did vote hashtag RMD, looks like you did go the correct way in the first game. Ray's team able to pull through. Love seeing Ray in the tournaments. He's one of my favorite guys. I remember, I think it was back at Gamescom, or maybe it was when we were in Ukraine, like 2016 regionals. He literally did a blade storm on stage for me. He's very <laughs> famous for his IRL blade storms, and here the damage from the in-game ones, just as deadly. Yeah, Zeray is really one of those super aggressive warriors, as you can see here. And uh, it's fun to see him competing a little bit here once again. And uh, honestly, Battle for RMD, they kind of just had the strategy down the entirety of the game. A little bit different from maybe what we would expect from a warrior DK team. Uh, usually when we see those two classes, where we expect them to go after the Discipline Priest. But uh, likewise, they can go after Kelkis and uh, just uh, try to make sure that the Discipline Priest runs out of mana. So uh, a little bit more of a calculated aggression coming out here from Battle for RMD in game one. And uh, I mean, the mana is really the big story here. Uh, the Druid just uh, trying to keep everybody alive uh, through the crowd controls. And uh, Zre, of course, the main target here, as long as he can keep himself, uh, you know, decently high on HP and dish out that damage, they're going to be able to secure that mana lead and win the game. Yeah, the mana lead really the thing. The Discipline Priest just ran out of that resource toward the end of that game. But ultimately, it was pretty close. You know, we definitely saw opportunities for the jungle Cleveland. Odd Love team, similar to Enlight, they're, they're kind of like the young version of Enlight, right? Like Enlight have been the superstars. They've done it all the way to actually winning a cup. But Odd Love team have been a bit of fun to watch as well. Yeah, they really haven't. I mean, I think this composition in general, the survival hunter, feral druid, this one priest, it's a composition that's very explosive. They go in, push for crowd control, big burst damage, and it's nice to see them sort of show case that here. I think in this particular matchup, they didn't necessarily have the best start. They seemed like they were on the back foot right away. If they could clean up their opener a little bit more, figure out a way to get crowd control and the restoration druid a little bit early on before all of them go down to 40% health, I think that would be obviously a lot more ideal. Yeah, just need to get more aggressive in the early game. Yeah, maybe we see them go after the druid play more aggressively, allocate their crowd control into the damage dealer members. We've seen some Restoration Druids get chomped by Jungle Cleave, uh, and Light running it with the Rep Paladin Feral Druid, I think killing him Poike with a few games, so I think the Feral Druids have potential to kill Restoration Druids. Runes of Lordaeron going to be locked in by the jungle, so they are looking to go faster than game one. They're not going to try and drag this fight out. They're n they know they're not favored in the late game. They need to end it quickly. Yeah, fair enough. This elimination series between Battle for RMD and Odd Love Team. And I gotta say, I, I'm personally a fan of Dre. I, I find this guy so fun. Just like you talk about the Jungle Cleaves playing so aggressively, Dre is the Jungle Cleave in a warrior. Like he, <laughs> he, he's the personification of jungle in a warrior. This guy, he just, he's constantly in battle stance. He loves to be aggressive. He'll use his fear aggressively, whatever it is. It, we talk about the more refrain warriors like Blizzo, but Dre is someone you can really get behind when it comes to just, I mean, the guy as well is like super lovable in real life as well yeah he's uh, definitely a likable person and uh, yeah you can see that on his stream as well yeah uh, he, he has a really kind of bright personality like that so it's a lot of fun playing with him and uh, watching him play but uh, like you mentioned I would say like Blizzo nerd rage a little bit more calculated in their aggression <laughs> Calculates uh, word, yeah. sometimes you know they will refrain from going behind that pillar <laughs> and uh, being in battle stance and not Zare he will be that guy who uh, goes in and just you love to see Either you die or I die. Someone's yeah. gonna die. That can be the deadliest warrior to go against. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it's good. It's sometimes like Vive it is, in yeah. North America, right? Vive won a BlizzCon basically playing like that. Vive was ridiculous. He right? was ridiculous. <laughs> I remember I watched a series with Vive, and I could totally see Jure doing this as well, where Vive was playing, I think, into Peekaboo's Rogue Mage way back in the day, and they lost literally eight games in a row. 
because he triggered it blind and got smoke bombed on. And he's like, if I don't trigger the blind, we lose all pressure. We have to go. I was going to say that he just he has a strategy in his mind and he'll play yep. it every single time. That was one of the great things. <laughs> Even if it about loses it. eight out of eight, it's yep. like this is how we're playing this match. He had a macro that charged and hamstrung someone at the beginning of every <laughs> game. He would basically just pick his target. All right, we're going after the rogue. Okay, it changes to arena too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I remember. Oh, <laughs> I, I miss I miss V. But Zray channeling his inner Vive here. Interesting choice from Otlov though. We talked about them playing this discipline priest. They're actually swapping over to Bay here on the Holy Paladin. First time we're going to see Bay bringing in the Paladin. It's going to give them a bit more longevity. It's going to give them probably slightly less consistent damage, but maybe more relevant damage. The Judgment's going to be able to land every time the enemy healer is in crowd control. Maybe this is to kill the Druid. They want to add some extra damage with the Paladin, run in, go for an all-in. This is definitely an interesting choice from Otlov Gaming, and I'm glad that they've got more than just one composition in their pocket. Yeah, no, I'm pretty happy. You know, whenever you're having a tough time, always call in Bay. It is the Holy Paladin pick that will be going into the TSG here, or should I say the RMD uh, in this situation. Ruins of Lord on for game two between Jre and Bay. Do you really want to get judged by Bay though, Adrian? I feel like that's not the yeah. it's not that well, that, 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 might, that might be what happens to Jre here. I'm kind of worried about him. <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> All right, here we go. Five seconds till the gate opens. Battle for RMD managed to pick up the first win, kind of exploiting the Discipline Priest in the last match. Now the base here for Ot Love team, it could be a different story. Let's see what <laughs> happens here. Bay entering the arena. Who's going to be the target for Otlov team bringing in a Paladin? We've not seen this composition with a Paladin healer. Perhaps this could be one of the best variants. Rivendir stunned up, and it's looking like Kelkiz wants to go for a freezing trap, but unable to find it just yet. Ursul's Vortex on the Harpoon, beautifully placed by Rivendir. That is going to put the team behind. Now Rivendir anticipating an attack on himself, activating Iron Bark prematurely, then stunning up the Hunter. Huge pressure right now from Sray's team. They are just just chopping them. Well, turns out bringing in Bay might not have been the best answer. At this point, he's really struggling. He's right all over him. Finally, Kelkiz is going to get topped off, but Bay's still in a lot of trouble. He's got the Divine Shield. He's going to use it. Divine Favor comes in, but Tony Farrell, he's just not getting healed. They're going after Rivender, but I think he might be able to survive. Gladiator Safeguard does prop. Motlop team having to be careful. If they could continue to push in aggressive, I feel like Rivender would have just died, but. Right now, Paige is struggling to keep Tony Farrell up. No cooldowns really left for throughput. Tony Farrell is going to stay very low on health for some time. Rusty switching over to the Paladin, looking to finish this. Zray with the Blade Storm as well, cleaving down two targets. Big Divine Favor, but not onto two members. And Tony Farrell with the Blessing Protection is somehow still alive on very low health. Divine Shield buys a couple of more seconds for the team. Can they manage to pull this back together? Can they scramble this mess and serve it on a plate? I don't think so. They're falling way too oh, far no. behind. They're desperate. They trap up Zray. He's Zray's just no going to trinket it. Zray leaps in for the game-winning fear. There's nothing no left for Kelkis, and it is going to be game two in favor of battle for RMD. I feel like we're seeing Mercy again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bay's, Bay's crusade, I think, might have come to an end in that one. It was, it was not, looking, not looking too good. Zray, love to see the aggressive trinket. This is exactly what we're saying. The scariest warrior, sometimes it is Zray's playstyle. Yeah, uh, and it works out beautifully here. Uh, I feel like Bay j just couldn't really keep up here with uh, all the damage from Battle for RMD. So uh, I have a feeling we might see Mercy again. It looked a little bit more um, refined with that Discipline Priest. Yeah, I mean, the composition with Discipline Priest is what jungle's most known for as well. Yeah, and that's because of the added crowd control. From the Discipline Priest, you can already get a stun out of your uh, Feral Druid, so having the Hammer of Justice is nice. You get cleaner setups, but ultimately, um, you uh, lose out on that Psychic Scream, of course, so uh, in, uh, the Feral is going to have to land a Cyclone to kind of cover up for that, and then, of course, he's not being able to do damage. And then the Discipline Priest, you have the mana lead on the Holy Paladin, but the Holy Paladin, when he runs out of cooldowns, not going to be the best healer to have on your team. I feel like a big mistake Outlaw team made is they didn't just go all in. Like, I feel like if Bay was just trading out the Trinket, the Divine Shield, you know, playing a Avenging Crusader, even double blessing your protection, and they just went all in onto Rivender, I, I actually don't know if he'd be able to survive or it would be really difficult. That's, that's certainly what we've seen from some of these Holy Paladin teams, right? Like, you've got all those cooldowns. If you trade them out slowly, there's no real advantage because the throughput healing isn't super great, especially without the ACs. So they tried something different. We're happy to see them. You know, Odd Love team, we've been talking about them a bunch. It's been really awesome seeing how these guys have been
been playing. Obviously, Bay is probably going to get benched off of that one. We're expecting them to finish it with the Discipline Priest. But hey, RMD looking real good here in the first series of the day. Dre's team RMD are 2-0 up in the series against Otlov team and Mercy is going to make the return on the Discipline Priest. I think we're all happy to see that. The main composition, the Survival Hunter, Feral Druid and the Discipline Priest have great synergies together. Battle for RMD are uh, looking to go through to the top six. Dre having an excellent start back into the tournament scene. What I want to see Otlov team do, throw caution to the wind. They just need to run at Rivender from start to finish, leave Mercy by himself, try to survive with Pain Expression, Rapture, Power Ward Barrier. They need to Play aggression. If they're not aggressive in this matchup, I feel like Battle for RMD is just going to slowly but surely secure a third win. We see the Arms Warrior Death Knight Druid underneath the bridge, cosplaying some trolls, waiting for their opponents to try and cross, and then immediately going to pounce. A bit of a stalemate in terms of positioning. It appears that Otlov team want to have the battle commence on top of the bridge, and Battle for RMD want to battle below until one of the teams decides to compromise this positioning. We might be at a bit of a stall. Yeah, and we'll see what happens. I mean, normally what happens in the situation is both teams play a, you know, a little bit cheeky, cheeky, but it ends up uh, with resulting in one team eventually pushing in. We'll see how it plays out, though. Hot Live team, obviously they don't want to be forced below the bridge. It's not an ideal position for Mercy. He wants to play up top. Right, I'll be curious to see what talents he's playing. He might be actually playing the knock. So if he has that, that's going to be really important for him to actually survive this matchup, and he really won't get much benefit of it on the smaller map. And I feel like that's what they tried to set, set up on Blade's Edge. That Mercy on this map with that talent should be able to survive a really long period of time. I'm waiting if we just see a death grip on Mercy. If he even peeks his face out around the corner of this pillar, he's going to be stuck downstairs on that Disciplined Priest. Rusty and Zray are moving in. Mercy's trying to run. There's no way. Don't let this Death Knight get anywhere near me. And he is going to be able to get a lot of distance there on the center of the bridge. Rivender now crowd controlled. Kelkiz moves in, but the War Banner was placed right before the grappling hook, so he has to wait for the freezing trap. Great break on that by Zray. Now Mercy and a stun, and Battle for RMD are going for the throat. This is such a good opener for Battle for RMD. Mercy, he's in so much trouble. Look at him barely holding on. He's traded out Rapture. He's traded out Powered Barrier. He's traded out almost everything. Gets interrupted on the Shadow Man. He can't recover his health. Does, of course, have the pain suppression, but this is a complete nightmare situation. Rusty and Sray, they are all over Mercy. There is no counter pressure right now for Avla team. They are just waiting to lose. Now, this is the one thing we credited Mercy's skills was his ability to survive while being the target. Zray using Die by the Sword to stay aggressive here, respecting the Freezing Trap to stay on target. And this is the aggressive playstyle we were noting earlier on. Zray just predicting damage ahead of time to try and kill the Priest. Uh -oh. But he is being pushed back. Otlov team look to put a point on the board. Oh! Big punish by Otlov team. Get off our Disc Priest. And they're going to take game it, three. It was the Triple Maledict. Triple yeah. Maledict play took him down. Just didn't have the heals to really push through. Zray being a little bit over aggressive in that situation. And those are the kind of plays that can cost you. I've never heard that sentence before. Zray being a little over aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> never seen that on stream. Never seen Drainer say that to him when they're playing together, the two of them. But, I mean, obviously, that is going to be a win on the board for Hot Love Team. You love to see it. Mercy, it looked like he was just getting hammered down for the first 30 seconds of that one. But they were the ones that found the kill first. Yeah, I mean, Zray really uh, not the warrior that you would expect to push behind pillars and be, you know, in battle <laughs> stance and things like that. So uh, this is definitely completely, you know, unheard of. Uh, but honestly, uh, this is also why, uh, you know, Hot Love Team... Uh, they always do well when Mercy is kind of targeted. Battle for RMD in the first game, I like their strategy of just playing it slow, going for Tony Farrell, going for Kelkis a lot, and then just winning on the mana. But in this time this time around, they went after Mercy. Zray, of course, just uh, throwing caution to the wind, trinketing, uh, using his uh, die by the sword offensively, and then just standing with his back to both melee, mm -hmm. so he's not parrying a single attack. <laughs> uh, just still, you know, tunneling Mercy. And this is one of those situations where he is a little bit overly aggressive. 
impressive and Mercy at the end of that one as well activating the Dark Archangel spamming out the Dispels uh, really doing a good job there uh, capitalizing on the, his positioning yeah it was really good play from Mercy but I gotta say I love Jure I think I think at the end <laughs> I saw him go to D starts at like 10% level, so <laughs> I'm, I'm not 100% sure but Jure stance is definitely a bit of a meme for him absolutely love the guy if I knew he was signing up today or I guess I did if I knew he was going to be playing I might have chose him for my MVP because Jure is just <laughs> one of my favorite players in the European scene obviously that game going in favor of Otlov, but this matchup is one that uh, Jure will be very good in because nine times out of ten the Discipline Priest dies there. It was actually really impressive that they were able to keep it holding and a big part of it was Blade's Edge. I think the Hunter was actually using the Dispersing Trap, the uh, Explosive Trap on a Talent to help knock the people away and keep his disc alive. Yeah, I think it's a smart pick. I mean, in particular, Blade's Edge is really good for teams that do have those knockoffs, especially against melee. So. Was a very good pick there, coming in from Ot Love team. Now going to Dollar and Sewers, eh, it might be a little bit more difficult. It might be a little bit more difficult, but if they could keep exploiting the fact that Zeray really is playing aggressive, and they can, you know, uh, coordinate a triple maledic push like that once again with the offensive dispels and Dark Archangel, it can be really difficult for a Restoration Druid to actually heal through that. So we're gonna have to see Zeray play a little bit more defensive. You know, maybe heroic leap away, try to <laughs> wow. avoid maybe just a little turn bit of around. damage, <laughs> turn around. So he's actually Dive of the Sword is parrying abilities instead of just still trying to a move at the priest as fast as you can. But <laughs> I wonder if Shrey does have it bound to A. I, maybe he just doesn't have the other binds. It's just yeah. like Vive. Instead of having like hamstring arena 2, it's just like runner arena 2, <laughs> like a script or something like that. I don't know. But Dalaran 2 is the second map. This is kind of, he's not going to have to cover so much distance. He can maybe even hold that heroic leap to get to the discipline priest in this call time. Him, call him the Zray train. He can only go forward. I love the Zray train. I'm, I'm, I'm down to, to board the Zray train, I gotta say. If Zray, if you want to play some games after we're done with this, I'm definitely down. Only knows how to go fast and only can go in one direction. The Zray train. Yeah, well, it's looking pretty good in this one. They're still 2-1 up in the series. I don't actually like the strat because I think Mer this is actually what Mercy is good at. Even though it's what Disc Priests are supposed at, to hate, yeah. we've seen him have the most success when he is the target. Uh, Battle for RMD won game one by going after the Feral Druid and the Hunter, and it looked really good for them going after the Feral Druid and the Hunter. So I'm not sure if it is actually the best strategy for them to run at the Priest, given that Mercy is apparently so experienced in dealing with it. That, that is one thing as well. Like, Mercy, last week we were a little critical of him when he was getting crowd controlled. I don't remember which team it was against. It was against one of the mage teams, right? Was it Yes Dave, I think, playing the mage yep. in last yes. week's series? those penguins and then they they didn't have such a good strategy there but when they were tunneling down Dre, i mean tunneling down mercy with the strategy he actually did a really good job of surviving not not quite in the aki level i think but still pretty impressive considering he's a newcomer to the scene yeah he had a good uh, defensive rotation on his cooldowns and he was able to survive uh, i think it was penguins windwalker dk yeah. uh, and then uh, they ended up getting reverse swept and, and knocked out of the tournament unfortunately uh, outlaw team that is uh, but that was when yes they started playing warlock and started going for crowd controls fears and uh, just setting up kills on the hunter it feels like whenever teams go for kelkis that's when teams find the most yeah. success against out love teams so i would say maybe that's the weakness of you know kelk is maybe not playing defensive enough or maybe it's a weakness from mercy not being good enough at avoiding crowd controls just yet uh, or maybe both of those uh, but that definitely seems like a winning recipe so i want to see that from battle from R for rmd if they're going to close this one out yeah, I also, for what it's worth, I feel like if they are going to play as aggressively as they are, the Relentless talent from the Druid seems a little bit weird because Relentless is something that over the course of a long game, it adds up in terms of, you know, you're going to get crowd controlled more, you're going to be able to sit more of that CC because of the Relentless. But with this style of aggression, surely Trink is better because they're only surviving about two traps as long as the game goes anyways. Yeah, and then of course you're going to get more value from the Trinket at that point, and you can also keep your team aggressive in that moment. If you get a Trinket Iron Bark Saray and actually allowed him to keep you know, attacking down Mercy, they could have actually won Blade's Edge because they had such a good start. I actually feel like Battle for RMD, I, I didn't know how they were actually going to lose that game. It looked so good. Yeah, for them it was point. looking pretty good. Everyone for a while. was dead. Mercy has traded out everything. Battle for RMD has every single defensive cooldown. Everyone's full health. But a lot of team, they found an opening. They managed to punish Dre. For Battle for RMD, they just need to play a little bit more patient, I feel like, because in game number one, it really looked like just going after the DPS, playing much more of like a calculated game where you're slowing down your opponent. That seemed to be the winning recipe for them. I'm not sure a Priest All-In is really going to necessarily bank them a win. 
Yeah, well, we'll have to see. Dalaran Sewer is obviously a small map. They'll be able to access whoever it is they decide to go after. Rusty and Jre, the Death Knight and the Warrior. Such a formidable combo for the Disc Priest to heal with. Let's see how we do in Game 4 of the series between Odd Love and Battle for RMD. All right, let's see if they can get it done here. Odd Love team putting a point on the board. Despite Game 1 and Game 2 looking like this was going to be a blowout, Game 3 looked solid and they found a way to stop the Zre train. But this game could easily be a pain train for Outlaw team. Can they keep it going for the reverse sweep? Battle for RMD are switching their strategies, targeting down Kelkiz and Tony Farrell this time around. And already you can see the damage. And this is not looking good once again for Outlaw team. But the thing is, they've managed to hold on to the pass. We'll have to see Mercy can to keep him alive. Leap of Faith onto Kelkiz, but a nice heroic leap pummel. Kelsey, pummel Kelkiz freeze. actually lost his pet there. Unfortunately, oh, no. Death Manor's summon back up. Intimidating shout lands. Mercy now still caught in crowd control. Kelkiz on the back foot. Has to every man for himself, but Kelkiz is just dying. He's just been dead from start to oh, finish. Aspect of the Turtle trades out. Overlapped with pain suppression. Battle for RMD once again. How did they lose this game? Well, I mean, I think we can see the weak link here. It's going after the Hunter. It's looking like an entirely different ball game here with the target adaptation. But all off team, they've stabilized and they're initiating an encounter attack. Zre using Blade Storm and dancing like a ballerina and hiding, trying to avoid the attacks of his opponents while Rivender sits through crowd control. He's made it through that chain. Now it's time to get aggressive. Zre moving in with a sharpened blade, moving over to potentially pummel Mercy. Mercy crashing in some Shadow Men's on the Kelkiz. Tony trying to support and forces Ray back, but they need to wait for the next freezing trap. Kelkiz gonna jump in, but gets Storm bolted on it. He does break out. Uh oh, Zre! Now Zre could go down. Beautiful crowd control chain here by Outlaw team. Gladiator safeguard Prox absorbing some hits onto Zre. It's looking like he should be able to stay alive. Mercy mind controlling the Death Knight Rusty off the side, trying to stall for that next freezing trap cooldown, where if they can land it, they could close this game out and bring it to a game five. We need a preemptive Iron Bark from Rivendor. If he gets the preemptive Iron Bark, Zray's going to be A-OK. -okay. But if he doesn't, he could be in some trouble. Bash over onto Rivendor. Kelk is caught into a Storm Balls. He could easily just fall. It's the power barrier keep him alive, but it's too much damage. Kelk is actually does manage to survive. Mercy. And just to keep him up, pushing in with the Shadow Men, that powered barrier paying dividends for Otlaw team, but still, Mercy's struggling to stay alive. He's getting swapped to. Zray and Rusty, they're all over him. Mercy in a position where he can land a full fear on Rivender. This is trouble time. Asphyxiate Sun shuts down the fear. Very nicely done by Rusty. That crowd control potentially kept them in this game. Zray and Rusty switching targets, going after the Discipline Priest. Mercy has no cooldowns left here. Desperate Prayer about to fade as he retreats back to the boxes, trying to bait Zray to overextend. Still an opening. Outlaw team have recovered. If they can secure another freezing trap on Rivender, there's no defense for Zre. Kelkiz is trying to land it. There's the stun to initiate. They secure the freezing trap. Zre trinkets out. He's going to just counter attack. He's going to counter attack while Steelers in a freezing trap. Could end up ultimately costing him the game. Now deciding to leap back to the boxes. Then charging right back in on a Tony Farrell. Very close call for Zre, but he's stable at this point. Kelkiz is the one who is falling behind. Yeah, that was really <laughs> questionable by Zray. Revenger was caught in intimidation, so certainly a trap to follow it up, and he was in battle stance for a moment, but Zray manages to hold on now. Kelkiz, he's in some trouble. Mercy almost completely tapped on mana, spamming out smites, trying to stabilize it. Also, continue the pressure on Zray. Zray could be in a little bit of trouble. Revendir realizing it, throws on the Iron Bark to keep him nice and healthy if he does get caught in crowd control. But Powered Barrier rotates back up for Mercy. That's a major defensive cooldown. If Mercy can get that barrier down, Kelkis can just push in and continue this pressure on Zray. All right, let's see if the Zray's train can be stopped here. Both Kelkis and Zray in a lot of trouble, but actually now Kelkis has a lot of defensive cooldowns. Rapture, paint suppression, aspect of the turtle. I would say that this is looking good for Oblob team. I'd almost confidently say that we're going to a game number five. If Mercy can maintain his mana a little bit better, Kelkis grappling hook over. Rivendir shapeshifts out of the route, avoiding the freezing trap for now. Gladiator safeguard going to absorb this attack while Mercy sits through crowd control. Kelkis moving over to secure the freezing trap, but he's very low on health. It could ultimately go down. One big heal comes in in the nick of time. He gets the freezing trap, but he's forced defensive. And this is the thing oh, about the Stray Train turtle. is that they just keep running you down. If you can't push them back, they are going to overwhelm you. 
Dre pushing for the final cooldown, maybe even just the game outright. Kelk is holding on to Aspect of the Turtle. He doesn't want to overlap. He wants to keep his pressure going. That vortex. He manages to hold on to it, but the Vortex denies the Freezing Trap for a few seconds. Kelk is disengages over. Can Rivendeer dodge the trap? He's trying to move over and dodge it. Kelkis is still holding on to it, but now he's stunned up. Dre in battle stance, chopping him up, looking to close it out. Zero mana remaining for the Disciplined Priest. Aspect of the Turtle has finally been forced. Battle for RMD switched some attention to Tony Farrell as well. There's nothing left for either team. Well, actually, there's still the die by the sword for Dre. He's one cooldown ahead. Mercy's trying to assist with the push. Dark Archangel activated. Damage increased, but no crowd control. Dre easily going to survive. Yeah, that looked really good from Zray. And I mean, at this point, he has yeah, uh, Die by the Sword. He actually opts to activate it. A little bit aggressive in that situation. Rivender, he does have the Iron Bark available. There is no crowd control on him. But Zray, he wants to continue the pressure. They just can't t take Otlov team down. Mercy's been doing a really good job staying alive. Kalkiz managed to trade out his aspect of the turtle. But at this point, if they go after Mercy, it's going to be a miracle if he survives. Yes, the Rapture, these Power Word shields are going to be really strong from Otlov team. If he can manage to hold on a little bit longer, they just need one more crowd control. Dre could easily fall. If there's a Maledict, this could be a winning situation for Otlaw team. Okay. Rivender struggling so hard. Tony Farrell gets swapped to. He's caught into an Asphyxiate Sun, and Execute comes in. Saray manages to close it out with Rusty. That was a well-fought series. That was actually a really good series. Yeah, that was a really good series, and a really good final game, honestly. It could have gone either way. Very aggressive on both sides, which is really fun to watch. Uh, Dre pulling through, though, with Rusty. I think Rusty got a nice couple of nice plays, good death grips on the barriers, death grips to deny fears at moments in the time, so shout out to him. We will be seeing this team battle for RMD playing out in the top six. They'll be in one of our series later today. Honestly, the matchup, though, it looked like it favored the Warrior and the Death Knight more, but Odloff team had played a really good showing in the series. Yeah. For sure, this was the best game. I think in game number one, it didn't go that well. And then when they stopped in the Paladin, that was just, it just wasn't the, the correct pick, I think. But in this uh, in this game, and of course in the Blade's Edge game as well, uh, they looked really good. They had a lot of pressure. You can see Mercy was tied on, uh, you know, mana. Both him and the Druid uh, were essentially out of mana here. And uh, Kelkis did a decent job here as well, surviving. Uh, I'm going to say they, they had one really lucky situation early on in the game where uh, Rusty actually did a really nice death grip stun combo on the Hunter and nearly took him down behind yeah. that pillar. Uh, so I gotta say, Rusty did a really good job in general uh, in this game because uh, he shut down fears like you mentioned, he set up kill, kill windows like that, and when he couldn't reach his target, he kept swapping around, creating a lot of pressure. So uh, definitely had a, a good showing here. And like you guys already mentioned, Ray uh, activating that die by the sword to just keep on <laughs> trucking. Uh, you know, this train doesn't stop. So uh, just aggressive stuff all around coming out of these guys, but it's not too unexpected uh, knowing some of these players. Yeah, Dre has a reputation for it. Love to see it, you know. <laughs> it's like Ben during the class, like, is he in battle stats? Is he just in a full <laughs> trap And then you see right the shields come up and a little bit like... Up, yep, he was in battle stats. It's like, Dre stance all the way, baby.